last session we with together I was trying to look at what leadership should be doing and just to give us a basis a foundation from which to work from and part of what uh, we covered last the last session was found in Numbers chapter 27 where as Moses is uh, handing over the leadership to Joshua he prays this prayer and he's in that Numbers 27 he says uh, may the Lord appoint a man over this community and I was saying that that has to do with authority protection he also says to take them somewhere to go out before them and come in before them uh, that has to do with being an example and uh, <clears throat> then he goes on to and says to bring them in and to take them out or to lead them out and that has to do with being a, a leader that motivates and takes them into the eternal purposes of God and then he also prayed so that the Lord's people will not be like uh, sheep without a shepherd and that has to do with caring for loving uh, protecting blessing being just a, a good carer of people I want to just uh, continue because the word of God is the best place to look at what what does leadership from a Bible point of view look like the Bible is always the best place to go it's always the best, all the best answers we can ever have for all of the things we are called to be and do are found in the Word of God. Um, to see how he feels about things and what he has had recorded by the Spirit of God in the Word of God for our lives. So another little scripture that I think is majorly helpful is found in Isaiah 55 and verse 7, where the Word of God says, The see I have made him a witness to the peoples, now, witness is one who has first experienced firsthand, has firsthand knowledge. It's not someone told me, it's this is what I know. I was there, I experienced it, I'm involved. So he, he says, see, I've made him a witness to the people and a leader. And we've covered that, taking them somewhere and a commander of the peoples, a commander, not a suggester. Someone who speaks with authority. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but it's, it really is one that has experiential knowledge of God himself. His will, his word, his ways, his works, his wonders. Um, not just a echo of what someone else said, but hasn't, uh, hasn't experienced. And then another helpful scripture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the 12th and 13th verses, where Paul says that the children of God are to respect those who work hard among them. So to be a leader, we need to be working hard. We don't sit around commanding people and wasting time at home, playing on the internet all day. We, we work hard. We get involved. We, we're out there involved with people. And... Uh, and then it goes on to say, not only those who work hard among you, but are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Now, that's a, it's a you know, it's not a nice thing to admonish, but it's, uh, we leaders are not afraid to tell people the truth, the truth about the word of God, truth about what they should be doing, truth about themselves, uh, even in counsel, not only in preaching. Uh and then he goes, and 1 Timothy chapter 5, the 17th verse, and it'd be good to read alongside that 2 Samuel chapter 23, the first seven verses. But in 1 Timothy 5, 17, yeah, Paul writes to Timothy, who's a young apostle to, who has to tell this to other pastors and leaders. Uh, he says, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well. In other words, govern well. Part of leading is problem solving, seeing ahead what's coming, um, somehow the other able to scope under God, like the sons of Issachar, that can see and then also know what to do about. It's something like Paul, uh, the, the book of Acts tells us about David, seeing what was lying ahead, uh, he spoke. So good leaders direct well. They preach and they teach, he goes on to say. And, and the preaching and teaching is not like a school teacher. It's an impartation, not just information. It's a life impacting. 
when we preach, people should not be the same. They either reject and they get worse or they embrace and they transform by the power of the Spirit of God. So he says also in Hebrews 13, 7 and 17, you can read it for yourself. Um, they speak God's word, not just their ideas or their favorite topics. And they live right, verse 7 says in Hebrews 13, 7. Their lips and their lives synchronize. They're in harmony. And then they watch over you. They care for you in the 17th verse. Another important scripture is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, the first four verses, where Peter, as in, not referring to himself now as an apostle, but as a fellow elder, he says that they to shepherd, they are to serve, not Lord, and to be examples. So these are some of the things that I believe we need to just build from. And now we want to have a look at some of the nuts and bolts of what that really means. Uh, please just understand this. Uh, this is not a to-do list. It's more uh, an overflow of the, the creative involvement of the Holy Spirit in a leader's life. If you really are truly a leader, the Holy Spirit will be motivating you. He will, if you're a biblical leader, that is, he'll be motivating you to be an overflow of his creative ability and involvement in and through our lives. So bear that in mind uh, when we look at some of these scriptures. Just remember this, that in order to lead, you have to be ahead of the people. You might not be as mature as them, but you have to be ahead of them. You need to know what God's saying. You need to uh, be getting revelation from his word. That's ahead of what the people for your life, the life, your life and the life of the church. Uh, in prayer and in commitment, etc. Uh, and only you can open that door for yourself. No one else can do that for you. You and you alone can make sure that as you respond to God and open yourself to God and say, God, come and do what you want in and through my life. You're the only one who can do that. And when God sees someone who commits themselves and meets his um, criteria, uh, not in, in perfection, just with my heart attitude, God, I want to be my best for you. I want to count for you. God just empowers that person Make sure that they know how to serve him at every level. Now, leadership, and this is so important, the supernatural nature of the church of Jesus demands leadership that rises above the human. It's not enough to try and lead from human skill, human ability, human wisdom, human experience. While those things can be helpful, they're not enough. It's got to be leadership that is supernatural, spirit imparted. That gives authority. The anointing breaks the yoke. And so when people try to make us leaders and we respond to that and God hasn't called us, we're wasting our lives. Make sure that you're a leader who has that supernatural call of God, impartation that's above the human. When God finds someone like that, he anoints them and he uh, separates them to his call and uses them mightily. All right. Now, trying to get to the scriptures that I, I want to share with you. I'm, ask, I'm going to just give you the point, ask you to read the scriptures. And you might need to just push the pause button, read the scripture, push the pause button, button have a look at it for yourself, come back to what I'm saying and see what God is doing, saying, trying to impart to you and transform you into to make you more effective, a better leader. Your life count more for God at every level. So these are some of the things that I see in the scriptures. I'll read the leader, uh, them to you, uh, the scriptures, give you, give you the what I call maybe just a little heading or a point, and then the scriptures. First of all, and none of this is not the order of importance, just things I wrote down. One, we to be an example in word, behavior, leadership. You'll find that in Hebrews 13, 7 and 17, which we looked at. In 1 Timothy 4, 12, where Paul says, let no man despise your youth, but be an example. And he talks about life in every area of their lives. So we to be an example. The second thing leadership involves is serving. In Luke 22, verses 25 and 26, Jesus says, we're to be servants. You read it for yourself. 
Thirdly, we are to make plain to everyone the administration of the mystery of Christ. To make plain to everyone, everyone in the church, they should be able to understand it. To make plain to everyone the administration of the mystery of Christ. You'll see that in Ephesians chapter 3. Read the whole, the first 21 verses there. But take special note of verse 6 and 10. And you can have a look at Ephesians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 8. These are some of the scriptures that tell us that, about making plain. The next one is to bring Christ's church with the help of the Holy Spirit to, to bring them to maturity, not lead them as little babes. Take them from milk to bread to meat, etc. in the Word of God. And in their lives. Galatians 4.19 is a scripture you could look at. Ephesians chapter 4 is verses 14 to 16. You see, what I'm trying to say is by lips and lifestyle, by what you preach from the pulpit, all of these things should be being made real to the people that God has entrusted to you to care for as, as leaders. And that's why we do we need team. The next one is to bring Christ's people, the church, into freedom. Freedom to worship God and God alone. Freedom, as I've said in our previous message in these kind of, this kind of series of things, is that the overarching factor of New Testament life is freedom. And so you could look at Exodus chapter 7 and Exodus chapter 8 and Exodus chapter 9 and Exodus chapter 10. You could look also at, Romans chapter, uh, at uh, Acts chapter 15 verses 1 through to 21, but taking a special note again, of uh, verses 10 and uh, and um, 10 and 11 uh, then also moving on I'm sorry that I'm just stumbling I'm looking and I'm looking at the time and thinking I've got to move on another part of leadership we need the Holy Spirit transforming uh, involvement in our lives in is to help God's people the flock to discover true identity and true security in Him and Him alone. While a church is a place that for many people needs to be a safe haven, God is always going to be stretching them. So that if they, their security comes from the church or from a leader, it's going to be wrong. It has to be in Christ and Christ alone. Because God is going to you know, change demands. Uh, to become more like Christ demands change. And change can bring insecurity. Uh, make us feel, whoa, 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 wait a minute, I'm not too sure. But if our security and our identity is not in what we do or not in other people, but in Christ and Christ alone, that's when we are helping them. So from the pulpit, we need to help them to find that security and identity in Christ and Christ alone. And so you can, by, how do we do that? By being sacrificial, available, letting them know how important and how we love them, but how important they are to God, showing them that God cares for them no matter what, even when they fail, help them to lift them up, pick them up, help them to move on again, etc. So have a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, the first 13 verses, and then also Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. We've got to be sacrificial and available. Moving on quickly, looking at time and saying, wow, We've got to keep on part of our leadership role is to point people to Christ and Christ alone. I hope you understand that. If you'll just read John chapter 1 and verses 15 through to 18, verse 23, verse 26, verse 28 through to 34, and verses 41 and 42 and verse 45, you'll see that constantly it's to Jesus and Jesus alone that we're to point people. If you are faithful with God's people, and not try to own them yourself. God will give you people of your own to lead that you can keep pointing more and more and more. It'll grow and grow and grow. So re remember another one of those things is to feed God's flock. In John chapter 21, we looked at that earlier on, but John chapter 21 verses 15 to 17, if you love me, Jesus said, feed my flock, feed my lambs, care for them. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me, you know, all those things. Uh, he even prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemy. So feed the flock from the word of God. Fresh bread, green grass. Moving on quickly. And I've just touched this, but I'll make it an item, a, a point. Prepare good food. 
fresh bread, green grass, for the teaching of the Word of God in a way that feeds, nourishes, strengthens them. And only the Holy Spirit can help you to do that. But He'll help you if you'll stick with the Word of God and stop introducing all the novel novelties and strange, unbiblical uh, things that people are suggesting around the body of Christ in the days that we're living in. So prepare good food for them. Psalm 4, uh, Matthew 4, 4, Psalm 23, Matthew 22, verse 16 are some of the scriptures you could look at for yourself. Another part of what leadership is, related for ourselves, is studying God's word, knowing it intimately and obeying it immediately. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but Bible faith obeys the obedience of faith. If it's not doesn't result in obedience for you, it isn't Bible faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it's only by faith that people, as you trust God for your own, through your own ministry to minister to others, that God's able to use you to the degree He wants to. Yes, He will honor His Word, but how much more powerfully when He finds a vessel, a human being, who's willing to obey Him and not just tell others what the Word of God says, but do it for themselves. So study to know the Word of God. Acts chapter 6, verse two, verses 2 to 4. One, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 to 17. Or just some of the scriptures that would uh, be endorsing what I'm, I'm trying to say here. Another one quickly is uh, that we've covered it to some degree, but I want to make it a point again. That part of leadership is to govern or to rule. The 1 Timothy 5.17. True, mature leaders can nip a whole lot of the problems, the trouble that are coming our way and into the church. They can nip it in the bud uh, if they will just catch a hold of what I'm saying here now. Another one is to encourage. Titus chapter 1 verse 9 says that we're to encourage. The best way to encourage people is through the Word of God. Not just saying nice things about them, but encourage them through the Scriptures. Uh, it's the Scriptures that free us. And another part of encouragement is to restore the fallen. As Galatians chapter 6, the first five verses tells us, it's part of leadership. Not to be come down and, and, and condemn and just give them no hope, but to gently pick them up, help them. Remembering that you yourself one day may go through what they're going through. No matter what the sin is, that's part of Bible leadership, encouraging. And then another part is, to refute the dissidents, those that are causing trouble. Titus chapter 1 verse 9, to refute the dissidents. We can't allow people to get away with causing dissension and division in the Word of God. You know, the Bible actually says in Titus chapter 3, the 10th and the 11th verse, and also in Romans 16, 17, basically it says similar, that we're to rebuke a device of man, warn him once, warn him twice, and after that have nothing more to do with him. Divisive people are one of those very almost exclusive people that God says have nothing more to do with. It's a very powerful thing. So refute the dissidents, warn them. Another one quickly is that we to pray for and with Christians, including the sick. We need to pray those apostolic prayers that I've talked about before. And we need to also be praying for, for healing and praying with the flock, for the flock, uh, with the leaders, for the leaders. For the team that we translocally respond, uh, uh, relate to and with them where we get opportunities. And you can look at Ephesians chapter 1, the 15th verse, uh, Colossians chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, etc. And for, of course, with healing, it's uh, James 5, 14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders, let them pray the prayer of faith. Uh, you know the rest. All right, quickly moving on. Helping people to discover develop in, demonstrate, delight in a New Testament, Kingdom of God, Word of God, apostolic prophetic culture and lifestyle. You'll see that in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, but right throughout the Word of God. We're to help them by teaching them clearly the different recognized gifts and callings and, uh, and valid ministries. By demonstrating their... their, uh, their um, operation personally and through the valid ministries in the church by making available and help them to find opportunities 
to do these things themselves. And then when they fail, mess up a little by allowing them to fail and helping them up and encouraging them to go on again. Quickly moving on. I've got just three more, I think, or four more. Part of leadership is to plan and strategize. Uh, getting revelation from God, direction from God, and strategies from God for your, your church. Strategies are not the big important thing, but God does in part. He shows us how we're to go. Uh, he knows the purposes. He has the plans for us. And he let David know and Solomon uh, Noah, as we've looked at in other previous teachings, he showed them how to go about it, how to move forward. And so we, we need to get to know God's word, word and his will and his ways and his wonders and his works, etc. through the word of God better. Quickly closing off, trying to close off here. Part of leadership is to recognize and release people into their calling and their ministries. The Ephesians 4, 11 and 6, 2, 16. It's more than really, merely preaching. It's, it's to help people. Uh, and this is in the context of the translocal team as well. It's not just the eldership, it's the elders with, <coughs> excuse me, with the uh, translocal team, uh, where we help them to see where they fit in, providing opportunities for them to, to spend time with, with people. And by the prophesying and the laying on of hands and the gifts of the Spirit operating towards them and then through them as well. I hope that makes sense to you, the 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Another part of Christian leadership biblical Christian leadership that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to be involved in creatively is training up and releasing leaders. Again, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. And so important that 2 Timothy 2, 2, to teach faithful men, to teach faithful men, to teach faithful, to teach faithful. Now for all of this to, to take place, we need to devote ourselves, give ourselves wholly as 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 10 through to 16 tells us. Read that for yourself. And so summing all this up again, as I think I've said in some other previous teaching, it all really boils down to this is what the discipling of the nations really is all about. The Matthew 28 verses 20 onward um, and, and preparing a bride for the for the land, the, the Revelation 19 verses 6 through to 9. So spend time before God, open your heart to God, give it your best, give it your all and trust God and say, God, I'll respond immediately. Now, folk, I hope that I've been of help to you. That's the call of God on my life, is to help leaders. And I'm still wanting to do the best I can, even right now, even though I'm getting a little older. God promised me that I would still remain green, still bear fruit, even in my old age. And so, for the pro the. Uh, absolute privilege of being able to share with you and for your privilege of being in leadership i thank god and ask you his blessing on you in jesus precious name amen